हेलो एवरीवन आई एम डॉक्टर पंकज खिराड़े वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स श्री शिवाजी साइंस कॉलेज अमरावती एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एनलाइटन द टॉपिक रिसेंट ट्रेंड्स इन नैनो मटेरियल सिंथेसिस नाउ डेज इट इज यूनिवर्सली एक्सेप्टेड फैक्ट दैट नैनो साइंस एंड नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी स्पैंस एवरी एस्पेक्ट आवर लाइफ दैट इज द फूड वी ईट द क्लॉथ्स वी वेयर द शेल्टर वी लाइव द कार्स वी ड्राइव the mobile phones we are using and many more also nanotechnology is one of the most rapidly developing multidisciplinary field so today we will discuss some of the basic facts about nanotechnology and nano science so this is the outline of my presentation first of all we will see basic facts about nano science and nanotechnology then role of synthesis methods broad classification of synthesis methods and then different types of synthesis techniques along with uh, some drawbacks and etc fact, facts so we all know that sir richard feynman who was america's most notable physicist and nobel laureate is considered as a pioneer of nanotechnology at the annual meeting of american physical society on 29 december 1959 he gave an inspirational talk on entitled there is plenty of room at the bottom an invitation to enter a new field of physics also he have queried that why cannot we write the entire 24 volumes of uh, encyclopedia britannica on the single head of pin in that uh, same conference he have discuss the controlling and manipulating the atoms at uh, atoms and molecule at the atomic scale also he have offered a prize for the person who can build or reduce the size of this uh, encyclopedia to the reducible size also he have offered the same prize for the person who can build a electric motor which size is com comparably very small in concerning with this uh, competition a researcher named william maclellan uh, from california institute of technology in 1960 developed a world smallest electric motor using a microscope and this was the first practical demonstration of feynman's talk and also he have won the prize of that $1000 which was offered by uh, feynman and this is how the journey of nanotechnology uh, takes place uh, now we have developed such a micro electromechanical system that is mems devices to such an extent that uh, we have developed 100 times smaller electric motors than that of the maclellan's uh, electric motor so before going to nanotechnology we, we we will understand how small the word nano is basically nano is a a unit that that 1 nanometer is equal to 10 raised to power minus 9 meter and uh, we will see how small the nano size is we will compare the size of nano with the objects we already whose size is already known let us take the example of this uh, plant flowering plant which is having a length in between some meter size if you further zoom zoom it we can see the leaflets which size is approximately 10 cm again if you zoom it then we can see the fly or insect which is having the size of nearly centimeters if you zoom a flower structure up to 100 micrometers then we will see the structure look like this again in 10 micrometer scale the structure will look like this further zooming we can look the flower uh, components like pollen grains and uh, inside the pollen grains that is up to 1 micrometer we can see structure like this again if you zoom up to 100 nanometers we can see inside the pollen grains and 
its inner components again further zooming up to 10 nanometer now we have seen this dna structure whose length is approximately or diameter is 2 nanometer and length is approximately 10 nanometer again after going to 1 nanometer we can see the structure inside the dna that is some nucleic acid and rna and therefore this is the nanometric scale now you can imagine how small the nanometer scale is suppose if you consider a football in front of a earth then a football is a nanometer in in front of the earth now we will see what is a nanoscience basically nanoscience is an interdisciplinary field at the boundaries of most science and engineering areas at the minimum you need chemistry to make or produce these materials then physics to understand the different properties and to use that properties and fabricate devices you need engineering that means you need chemistry physics and engineering to develop the devices so what is basically nanotechnology the word nano comes from the greek letter that means uh, dwarf dwarf means short and therefore nanotechnology is the field of applied science which is focused on design synthesis characterization and applications of materials and devices on the nanoscale nanoscales means what 1 to 100 nanometers also it can also be known as art and science of manipulating atoms and molecules to create new systems materials and devices nanotechnology spans almost every technological areas like mechanics robotics transportation the national security and defense system food agriculture medicine health aerospace engineering environment advanced textile materials etc so how nano structures or nano materials are different from their microstructure or bulk counterpart basically uh, what happens means which properties changes mechanical strength changes that means wh when we go from bulk particle to nanoparticle its mechanical strength completely changes if you see the example of carbon nanotube it is uh, very much stronger that is uh, nearly 100 times stronger than that of the steel also electrical conductivity also changes some of the materials become very conductive or becomes very insulator depending on its uh, properties thermal conductivity also changes that means heat carrying capacity also changes when we move from bulk counterpart to nano range its chemical reactivity abruptly increases because when we go from bulk to nano its uh, surface energy is increases therefore chemical changes encounters also optical properties also changes optical properties like color changes transparency changes we, we we all know the example of gold nanoparticle that is gold changes is uh, color from different size of uh, its particle sizes also magnetism also changes that means uh, some material become paramagnetic or super paramagnetic, super paramagnetic when we go from bulk to the nano range now the, the question must be raised in your mind why these properties changes so the reason is mainly due to the these facts i have given over here that is large fraction of surface atom that means the superficial atoms increases in that material also the high surface area to volume ratio increases that means surface area to volume ratio increases and therefore materials become very reactive Confirm, quantum confinement effects and spatial confinement effects takes takes place also some surface plasma re resonance effect can be tuned with the size and therefore you can get the different optical properties some uh, reduced imperfections also takes place some defect formation takes place when we go from bulk to the nano and because of these reasons the different physical and chemical properties of nano materials changes than that of the bulk counterpart now as we go from 
bulk to the nano the classical mechanical law changes from uh, two quantum mechanical laws that means you have to take consider the quantum mechanical effects occurring in that material this slide represents when we move from the bulk to the nanometric scale then you have to obey the laws of quantum mechanics that means when we go into nanometer scale the quantum mechanical law is important and you have to take consider that Now, depending on its dimensions, the nanostructure materials can be divided into four classes that is 3D, 2D, 1D and zero dimensional materials. First of all, we will see what are three dimensional materials. Basically, three dimensional materials are the materials in which all the three dimensions that is length, breadth and height are outside the nano range. And these are known as three dimensional materials. The best example is bulk powders the bundles of nano wires, the bundles of nano tubes, also some multi nano layers, nano spheres, these are the examples of three dimensional materials. The second type is two dimensional materials. In the two dimensional materials are the materials in which out of the three dimensions, that is uh, length, breadth, and height, only two dimensions are outside the nano range. The best example is nano fins, nano layers, and nano coatings. After that, the one dimensional materials these are the materials that means one dimension is outside the nano range and the best example is nano tubes nano wires nano rods the ultra thin films etc after that the last type is zero dimensional materials zero d materials means all the dimensions are in nano range narrow narrow range means basically the particles whose uh, size in between 1 to 10 nanometer these are known as zero dimensional materials the best example is uh, graphene quantum dots and some carbon quantum dots these are the uh, type of zero dimensional materials out of these sometimes the term uh, nano composite is used the term nano composite means we can uh, uh, the material that comprise of many nanoscale inclusions that means if you combine two or more nano materials then that uh, material becomes nano composite. Some of the trending examples of nanostructures nowadays this is quantum dots and carbon nanotubes are uh, one of the most uh, rapidly developing fields in uh, nanotechnology because these quantum dots having a, a large number of applications in optoelectronic devices because it uh, emit light in specific wavelength range that has been be used in solar cells the ceiling, single electron transistors, quantum computing, medical imaging, etc. The carbon nanotubes, these are the basically hollow cylindrical tubes of 1 to 10 nanometer in diameter and it is extremely strong and it is hard to break which conducts electricity faster than any other known material. Also, there are some possible applications in pharmacy and medical sciences. Now, to synthesize nanomaterials basically there are two types that is uh, top down and bottom up approaches the top down approach is when tools are cut and uh, shape materials into the desired shape and order then it is top down approach the best example is ball milling and the bottom up approach is uh, means you are starting from the small things and getting the bigger the best example is uh, nano lithography and some chemical synthesis methods are the examples of bottom of synthesis now we will see the basic difference between the top down and bottom of approaches the figure represents the first figure is top down approach that indicates we are starting from the bigger material and we are giving particular shape to that uh, bigger things and uh, getting arranged in the desired shape this is known as top down approach this approach is analogous to making a stone statue or stone sculpture. It is one of the most ancient activities. In ancient times, we are using this top down approach. The second type that is bottom up, that is, uh, it is uh, similar to building a house. That is, we are uh, placing cubes one over another and getting the desired structure. 
and this uh, approach uh, having the some of the advantages like it has uh, less wastage also a strong covalent bonds will uh, hold the constituent parts together therefore bottom up approaches nowadays we are using them also there there are several synthesis methods available to synthesize nanomaterial that is physical chemical and biological methods the physical methods again classified into some mechanical method like like mechanical ball milling and second type is vapor method that is physical vapor deposition some uh, that is pvd the examples are sputtering laser ab ablation the laser pyrosil pyrolysis these are the example of physical vapor deposition now the second main type that is chemical method it is uh, classified or uh, some sol gel method chemical vapor deposition method colloidal method spray pyrolysis techniques these are the example of chemical method there are some biological methods also available to synthesize nanoparticle like like these methods are known as green synthesis method in that method instead of using the hazardous chemicals you use this uh, plant extracts the latex flower seeds or using some bacteria fungi to synthesize the required material these are the type of biological method now there are some trending synthesis methods for thin films basically spray pyrolysis spin coating sputtering chemical vapor deposition these techniques are used for the bulk materials the conventional ceramic and ball milling processes are used as well as in concern with the nano materials the chemical co precipitation method the sol gel auto combustion hydrothermal micro emulsion solothermal electrochemical these methods are used now uh, what is ceramic method in basically it is a conventional method to synthesize nano particles of uh, in bulk form in, in bulk form that means you are getting your uh, material of greater sizes basically what uh, what we can do uh, just take the carbonates or oxides of that particular uh, material crush in a pestle mortar for few hours then sinter for uh, high temperature above 1000 in a furnace and you will get the your required product also this mechanical milling like ball milling you can get the nanoparticles in bulk form that is a greater sizes using this ball milling process there are lots of uh, disadvantages of this method that is it uh, requires high temperature agglomeration of particles takes place some hazardous gases form formation also takes place during the reaction poor dispersion of constituents also the high porosity and a light a large crystallite size is a drawback of this conventional ceramic method and therefore to overcome these disadvantages uh, the new wet chemical methods were developed to synthesize the nanoparticles we will see in your in our next lecture thank you also for queries you can contact me on this email thank you